Welcome to another edition of the Piercing Wizard podcast. I'm Ryan Willette from Precision Body Arts in Nashua, New Hampshire. And on the podcast today, I have my friend Kendra. Introduce yourself, Kendra. Hi, my name is Kendra. I pierce at Dragon FX in West Edmonton Mall in Edmonton, Canada. And there is a special connection between Kendra and I. We were both just uh, recently elected to serve our first term on the board of directors for the Association of Professional Piercers. Uh, Yes, I'm super excited to be able to work with you as well as Louise, our other uh, new electoral. I think I'm hoping that in the next three years we'll get lots of stuff. I'm... Super excited, but I mean to be completely honest, like I'm I'm super nervous for the the challenge. It's a it's a big amount of responsibility. I've seen lots of people um, be on the board, and some of them kind of go into it being like, I really want to get some stuff done, and that's exactly what they do. And then others just get like really bogged down by the the workload. And I'm hoping that I don't end up on on that list. I hope that I can manage it and still manage my studio and. For people who don't know me that are listening, uh, you know, I run my studio, you know, I, I own the, the building it's in, you know, pretty busy when it comes to office stuff, but uh, thanks to one of my other piercers just recently moving to my city, I've got a couple extra days off a week now, which is totally new to me, and I'm, I'm totally ready to, to jump in with both feet. Uh, I'm quite lucky. I, I work in a shop that we have several really, really great piercers, so my schedule gives me a little bit of extra time away from my shop, but I also am a full-time mom um, and have other volunteer responsibilities. So for me, it's not so much about um, necessarily what I can accomplish, but it's I want to do that hard work. Yeah, I'm not really looking to, like, change the world or anything like that, you know? Like, I, I realize that the people who are on the board right now, you know, like, they're super hardworking people, um, you know, they, they've got a lot of things in motion, and I would really just kind of like to, to help them fulfill the things that they've already started, you know, I'm not really looking to, to take on anything huge, maybe something down the road will come up as a passion project, but for right now, I'm just really, I'm ready and willing to just help in, I help out. Um, so one thing that I really wanted to talk about, which is really unique to you, is um, just in the couple of years that, that I've really like known you and we've been talking, um, you've really taken like leaps and bounds on your behind-the-scenes work with the, the APP. And um, for, for people who don't know, uh, I am one of the people who helps to get people scholarships to go to the, the APP conference, and Kendra was actually one of the LD scholars. What year was it? I believe it was 2011. Um, I just celebrated my sixth year anniversary of my apprenticeship, which was also the first year I went to conference. Um, I got started in this industry a lot later than a lot of people, so um, I I hit the ground running, I guess. My apprenticeship was just under six months. Um, During that time, I got that scholarship and went to my first conference and never looked back. That's awesome. I mean, just just being able to say that that in a, in five years, you know, you know, you went from uh, someone who had a scholarship to come to their their first conference, and now, you know, it, it wasn't just that you were you know like deciding like, hey, I want to do something. It's that membership saw all the hard work you've done, and you know, they had the confidence in you to to vote you onto the board of directors. And you know, if, if somebody else hasn't already said it, I, I really just want to say a congratulations for that huge journey that that you've undertaken in, in just a couple of years it's it's really impressive oh thank you you're making me blush um Aww. i guess it kind of goes with my philosophy of life i guess it's, there's no point in doing something if you're just going to do half a job at it so from my first trip to conference i threw myself in there i made myself available at six in the morning or two at night i i chose not to necessarily party when i could have um Hard work is really important to me and, and what people perceive of me. So I would rather have someone be like, oh, she's changing garbages and sweeping floors, than be like, oh, yeah, she's really cool. Um, I try well, to I, there's nothing wrong with being cool, too. Hopefully a couple people think I'm cool. My mom <laughs> says I'm cool. <laughs> it's the beard. Yeah, it's the beard. Uh, so when it comes to volunteering, I, have you, like, really volunteered much before the APP? Like, have you always done things like that, or is it kind of newer to you? Uh, no, volunteering has kind of been a, a part of who I am for a really long time. Um, so my my past history or work history is in the education field uh, and the science field. 
And when I was done teaching um, things like that, I worked with special needs kids. I also helped to co-found a nonprofit here in Canada for sustainable food production and sat on their board of directors for uh, three years. I've helped to build homes for the, need, the needy and the homeless. Um, I just feel like we live in a world where I'm very fortunate that I have a roof over my head and food on my table and my kids have shoes, that there are so many people out there that need my help. Um, so. You sound way more qualified for this than I am. <laughs> ah, different qualifications. <laughs> um, so, you know, one person I, I definitely want to get on here for the podcast, uh, but, you know, right now she's got kind of like a, a tough patch with work because she recently just had a, an accident where she's in a cast for a little while, but... Uh, you know, Caitlin McDiarmid uh, has been a huge impact on the both of us in our careers, and I, I really think that her voice would be would be great for for people, not just piercers, but you know, the the clients that are listening to this maybe don't realize how big of an impact she's she's had on our industry. Oh, I hundred percent agree. That that lady, without that lady, I wouldn't be where I am. Um, I call her my twin. We share a birthday. There, we have a lot of things in common, and and I truly believe without her involvement in our organization we would not be where we are today um a lot of me she doesn't do anything halfway it's all or nothing with her and she puts her heart and soul into our industry when she's never been a piercer um and i think oh, yeah, that's, that speaks volumes for her work ethic and and her passion alone yeah, because I, I think one really important thing about volunteering that a lot of people don't understand is sometimes you can't just walk in the door and say, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm looking to help. You know, you have to have an in or somebody who knows where your work would, would get the, the biggest benefit. You know, so, uh, you know, I went to conference for a few years and I didn't really make a lot of, you know, instant contacts. You know, I, I knew some people from online and I talked to some people in classes, but, you know, I, I didn't really have that uh, – community kind of connection at first. And a, a big thing for me was talking to Caitlin, you know, because I started to gravitate around the, um, the expo and class area and she's always there, you know, so I saw her, <laughs> and, you know, she's got her like little staff of minions. And, you know, I, I started to say like, Oh, Hey, you know, I, I have an hour, you know, is there something I can do to help out? And then it, it slowly kind of rolled into this thing where, you know, she saw that maybe I would be good in a, a certain, you know, aspect of volunteering, and she kind of nudged me towards that. And, and, you know, I think it was really beneficial to my career and, and you know, to my, my growth as a as a person and, and just my interaction with people in the industry. Like, uh, it was a pretty significant impact on me. Uh, I 100% agree. She saw some of those same things in, in myself. It was like, hey, I have this project idea. I'd like you to run with it. Um, and it's kind of like, oh, Okay. Um, the fact that she puts her trust in you is an amazing um, um, gift that I don't know if a lot of piercers understand what it, what it means when she says, I believe that you can do this. Um, last year, I, I had the privilege of being promoted to um, the registration manager when, um, unfortunately, one of our volunteers was unable to make conference last year. And it was one of those cases where if she hadn't have believed in me, I couldn't have done it because I didn't believe in myself. So. Yeah, well, that doesn't look like an easy task for for anybody who's been to conference and has seen the registration area. You know, like how difficult of a job that must be just from the sheer volume of people they get. But you know, if you've never been to one of the APP conferences, like registration is like that's the trenches. You know, like that's where everybody's going going to go when they have a problem or a question. You know, they all just kind of like wave after wave, kind of flock towards that area, and you know, you really have to be able to to manage a staff to be able to swing it. Yeah, and and Caitlin has built a great team. So we're very fortunate that all of us work well together. We rely on each other to do things. I know that I couldn't do that job by myself if I didn't have her supporting me and the people that work alongside of me, um, which is kind of nice. It I'm is. Happy family. So speaking of, you know, going back to uh, the scholarship, mm -hmm. the scholarship for the, the 2016 conference is going to be uh, ramping up pretty quickly soon. I'm pretty sure that... Applications are being accepted right now. You can go to safepiercing.org. You can find out a little bit more information about it. If it's not directly up on the APP website, I think it's going to go live when the conference website goes up. That should be up fairly soon. Um, but 
I would really encourage anyone listening, uh, if, if you're a body piercer and you've always wanted to, to go to the APP conference, but you haven't been able to because of financial reasons, you know, be aware that there's a scholarship specifically for people in those situations where, you know, sometimes people need uh, an extra helping hand to, to get there. And that's what it's for. So in exchange for, you know, working a, a fair amount of hours during the week, you have access to classes, you'll have uh, a room to stay in. You'll have a support group. You know, if you're nervous about going to conference, particularly by yourself, you know, be aware that if you are lucky enough to get one of the scholarships, you're definitely not going to be alone. You're going to have a pretty tight knit group wrapped around you. And some pretty impressive people have have come out of that opportunity. You know, Kendra is only one of them, but lots of other scholars have gone on to membership and being involved in committees and and being really significantly wrapped into the the core of the APP. So, um what uh, what was what was your experience like as an LD scholar? Oh boy, um, it was a roller coaster of of good and bad all at the same time. Uh, two days before I left, I called Caitlin and said, "I can't do it. I can't get on the airplane and I can't come. There, there's just too many people I'm going to know not know, and I'm too scared." And she, I think, if she had the opportunity to fly to Canada, she would have came and put my butt on the plane herself. <laughs> um, and she said, "No." we'll see you here. And so the entire process was, was building confidence in myself, knowing that it was something achievable. Um, and then from there, the minute I got off the plane and met the other scholars that, that um, were awarded the same year as me, um, those fears all just disappeared. Um, I wasn't alone. I didn't need to be scared. There was a hundred people in the same boat as me, maybe not scholarship winners, but their first conference, not knowing anyone, um, being a little bit socially anxious. And so from there, we just, we worked hard. And, and during that hard work, I guess, I've met some of my best friends in the whole world. Um, some of the volunteers that I still work with are more like brothers and sisters to me than my own brother. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely does seem like that kind of like almost summer camp mentality. Is that a good analogy for someone who's a, Can- a Canadian? Do you guys have the same kind of like summer camp system there? Um, not quite, um, but it's it's a lot like that. Or, you know, um, if you're thinking to university days, if you've ever been part of a sorority or a fraternity, it builds this this bond that is something unique that you share with those people. So some of those people that I volunteered with my first year, I haven't seen again, but I can get an email or a text from them, and I'm there any time of day for them. It doesn't matter how far away they live or when the last time we talked was. Um, it really was a, a life-changing opportunity for me. Um, I'm no longer scared of those social situations that I'm unfamiliar with. Um, I'm willing to step outside of my box a lot more, um, put myself into to situations I wouldn't have. And without that scholarship, I never would have taken that first step. Yeah, I, I think I've talked to a lot of different people, especially uh, the international attendees who have been lucky enough to get scholarships. You know, it it's got to be even more intimidating coming from a completely different country, you know, whether it's Canada or whether it's, you know, Britain or, or wherever people are coming from, you know, it's, it can be really intimidating thinking like I'm on the outside. Uh, but you know, being part of the, the scholarship or in the overall volunteer team, you know, you're really just kind of, you're welcomed in with, with open arms and, you know, you really go, you go home with, not just the education from the conference, but all those contacts and all those friendships that'll that'll last for years in the industry. Oh, I, I definitely agree. Um, there's people that I've met through the scholarship program, either when I was a scholar, um, when I became their supervisor and they were new scholarship um, recipients, or even last year when I got to help choose those recipients, that, you know, if I hear of a job opening, they're the first people I think of. They've proven that they want to be the best that they can, um, and half them will move around the world if they need to. That's That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a, it seems like a really huge bit of motivation, you know. There there have been some piercers where they've gotten it and, you know, maybe they were at a point in their career where they were kind of a little worn down, you know, by by some of the challenges, financial or, you know, logistical challenges for for education in in different countries. Uh and then it just really revitalizes them, you know, not not just coming to conference, but uh being brought to conference with that kind of support structure. So for, again, for anyone listening, I would really encourage you, you know, as long as you are a professional body piercer with, I I believe, is it one year piercing experience, Kendra? I don't know if we lost Kendra. Oh, I'm back. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, if you, you know, if you want to, if you want to apply and as long as you're a professional piercer currently working in a studio, again, visit safepiercing.org. 
Uh, if it's not directly up on there, it'll be up on the conference website fairly soon. I'm pretty sure the deadline is going to be somewhere around late March or uh, you know maybe early March, somewhere around there. The, the deadline will be really clear. Um, uh, but get your applications in, you know, like the, the worst mistake you can make is, is not trying. Uh, so my name is Ryan Willette. My website is precisionbodyarts.com. What's your website, Kendra? Um, you can find me at www.dragonfxtattoos.com. 